Good morning, everybody. My name is Marion Palmer, and I am Head of Department of Technology and Psychology in IEDT, formerly Chair of the Teaching and Learning Committee. I just want to introduce our members here. I have Alison Egan from Marino Institute of Education, Michael Flannery from Marino Institute of Education, Anya Galvin from UCD, Nula Hunt from NCAD, Theresa Logan Phelan from Trinity, and hiding at the side, David Jennings from UCD, and Mariano Carroll from IADT. Um, so we, we are a Leinster Pillar 1, we are a national cluster uh, similar to the southern cluster that um, presented previously and we have come together to present to you this type A proposal and I'm going to do it. Um, that thing. So what's the overview of our project? We've literally taken the guidelines we were given by the forum to present so you're going to see that structure. So rather than we're, what we are taking is exemplar case studies of technology enhanced learning and we are very directly linking to the All Aboard's digital, uh, digital Skills Framework that was um, that is a current uh, national forum project and Anya Galvin and UCD have been working on that and provided provide the direct link with the All Aboard. So we are absolutely looking at that. So our case studies are going to link to the Digital Skills Framework. I realise I should have put the Metro map into this presentation but didn't. We're going to share our case studies in our Tell Week and we're calling it a Tell Week um, and we're going to share the case studies online so they will be open to everybody. Very importantly, this is the first teaching and learning project for the cluster. Um, the cluster, let me just give you some numbers. Moving from right to left, IEDT has 2,300 students. NCA, uh, Marino has 800. Uh, NCAD has 1,200. I think. Trinity has 18,000. And UCD has 30,000. So we, I call us the two, two whales and three minnows. Uh, <laughs> and so, you know, please do not underestimate the difficulty and demands that coming together as a cluster is it and I can tell you um, I get feedback we, we get feedback as institutions about that so we're coming together for teaching and learning just in terms of resources when we do proportionally for teaching and learning we've about got the same resources for teaching and learning about 0.25 of a person per student um, f for the resources so we are doing this work on existing resources the, uh, and that. So just to, to bear that in, in mind, and we have kept that in mind, what can we actually achieve and what can we commit to the forum to do? We don't want to make any commitments that we cannot achieve. So our key, all right, so coming on to, uh, so that first key, the other thing is that diversity of, of uh, right across the um, institutions, the diversity of disciplines, the diversity of lecturers, uh, the diversity of skills, provides us with an incredible opportunity for engagement in uh, digital um, that. So what are the key outcomes going to be? Now I talk fast, I haven't timed this presentation for various practical reasons, so if I talk too much, slow me down and that. So the first outcome is actually to disseminate the All Aboard Digital Skills Framework. I think as a group, when Anya introduced it to us, um, because I was, I was vaguely aware of the project but not following the thing, um, we, we said this is a very powerful framework. It has been funded by the forum, then we should disseminate it across our institutions. Um, and just love, love the idea of that. So developing a, a, a development of a shared understanding of the framework. The previous presentation talked about de developing discourse. We want people to start using the All Aboard framework to start talking about digital skills. I think one of the things, and, and Philip mentioned it in the questions, that we forget the changes that have taken place. A writer who isn't quoted often, Lewis Gilbert from America, talks about this, the small changes that have happened that have been profound. Uh, when I started teaching in IDT uh, 17, 18 years ago, handwritten work from student was normal. It's not normal now, uh, depending on that. It, you know, the use of PowerPoint has swept in. So there's, there's been a lot of change in terms of digital skills. The second outcome will be exemplars for staff and students um, in a range of disciplines. We, don't, we, we have an idea, we have, we've actually, we'll come back to the case studies in a moment and will be enhanced to enhance digital skills for teaching and learning for both students and staff, and we're conscious of that. And I think one of the key outcomes will be the five institutions working together. Um, increased communication and collaboration. And uh, while we hope that you know, the, the projects will be here next year, we've also got to allow for change and uh, diversity as teams change and develop. 
So those are the key outcomes. We're linking to the Order Board's digital skills framework, and we are trying to develop exemplars that, that use that and develop our digital skills. So what will we actually, actually do? We'll identify participants locally, and we've said maximum two case studies per institution. Um, in IADT, we have identified our um, case study, and we've said the case studies can be modules, staff, or students. And we've said a maximum two per institution, and really one is a staff-led one and one is a student-led one, if, stu if the students do it. And one of the issues we're facing, and certainly locally and I think right across our clusters, is while students, our poor students' union, have, you know, we have we've t a type B application in with that, we've first year matters, with that, we have a lot of... Um, there's a lot on demand on the students' union, so it's what they can do. The other thing I would say, and I should have said it in, in, in the previous slide, is that, or previously, is that we have a lot of telework going on at institutional level anyway. So it's building on that and looking at that. Uh, we've also learned a lot about each other. For example, going from left, if that's right to left, uh, Trinity use Blackboard, NCED don't have a VLE. Um, on, um, UCD use um, Blackboard, Marina use Moodle, and we use Blackboard. So, you know, we have to take those kind of things into that. When we've identified our two case studies, we're going to work with them to develop it, do a needs assessment and, and appropriate training, and then use a rapid development process um, to, to, if you like, develop them further for the tech. Tell week, and then share the case studies within and across institutions. Um, we propose to use a digital course sites for open digital access so that anybody can access it and look at that. And we actually, it's one of those things, we actually decided that before we realised that some institution didn't have a VLE. Um, and look, we looked at that. So, how will we do it? Well, this group is the central working group. And we've been meeting since June 2015, uh, representatives from each institution. I'd like to particularly thank Anya Galvin of UCD for calling us together and, and suggesting that we start um, a, a process of discussion and that kind of thing. And it really has been learning to understand each other's language and, and process um, and, and learning to work together in a way can we make sense um, and that's the first step. So this central working group will be responsible for, if you like, the rollout of the project. At local level, um, we're going to set up local implementation groups of staff and students. So for example, in IADT, Mary Ann is the staff training learning development officer, our e-learning technologist, the education office of our student union. We have already met to look at what we might be uh, uh, and how we might do it. And then we will bring in additional ex external support for e-learning as required. And that's where most of the funding from the forum will be going uh, and looking for that external support. Um, and then it's really working with the modules in, uh, I'll leave what the IADT example for, for, for the questions and you can come back to us there. So we haven't given you a detailed timeline. We have a detailed timeline, a work, line, a work package set up, but we literally follow the, the forum's um, guidelines for this presentation. Um, so, and in fact, yeah, and I forgot, I should have put it in that slide, our tell week will run in March from the 7th to the 16th of March. Uh, and that's when we've suggested it comes out. Okay. So, how will we promote what we're doing? Well, in our work packages and our work plan, we've said the first thing is a communication strategy uh, within and across the institutions. Actually, and that's something that, that I've been working in, in teaching and learning for, in Dunleary for, what, eight, ten years now. And actually, one of the difficult things is that communication because sometimes you're just so busy doing that you're not telling people what you're doing. Um, and that's the thing. So th the first thing, that, that regular communication with stakeholders. So I've held, we've held an implementation group meeting to tell people that we are applying the project. Obviously the institutions agree, but we're looking at that. Um, regular communication with stakeholders, trying to tell people. Now, I don't know about you, but within our institution, if you send emails about that, people file them. 
and they read them. So it's how, you know, it's developing a local communication strategy, but also a communication strategy across um, the five institutions so that we know what we're doing. Because once this project starts, it's going to be a gallop to the end of the tell week and looking at that. Local updates, and then an online present is appropriate. And again, you have to uh, tailor it to the size of the institution. So one of us said, oh, we can update our Centre for Teaching and Learning website. And I'm saying, Centre for Teaching and Learning? That's me. Half a quarter of my time. Um, it's Nula, a quarter of her time. So we have to scale it up for the size of the institution and looking at that. Key aspect for communication for National Forum was for wider dissemination, and Sarah has um, argued that, that how the, the last session today will be about that, that um, wider dissemination, and the reason we're all presenting to each other is that we know what each other is doing and how we can link about it. And then particularly the Tell Week. Now, the Tell Week, again, has different impacts on different institutions. I know that in my institution, the Tell Weeks, I couldn't have picked a worse week for students because it's the end of term and they're going to be drowning in assessment. So we will have to accommodate that to make sure the student voice is there. We're going to do very similarly to the previous presentation and have a day in each of them with, we hope, live streaming. I'm not sure live streaming works. Marina has live streaming. I think UCD has, but that's a technical issue. Um, and we're looking at let's check anything else. And um, we're looking at how um, we actually, you know, structure the day and actually, you know, make it a, a, a worthwhile day. We don't in Dunleary have a tell week. We haven't generally one. We have staff development days with a strong talent. But again, we have to learn to work how each institution is going to do it. Okay. Um, the other one we'll do, and you know, well promotion. One question we have considered quite considerably is how will we evaluate the impact? You know, again, feedback from that. Well, first of all, we're going to take a developmental evaluation approach, you know, that learning by doing of Quinn Pattern and looking for improvements. We are not at zero. We're trying to possibly establish a baseline, but we're not at zero. But, but many in people in our institution could be. So we're looking for improvements across the cl cluster and within each institution. And then we're going to evaluate the tell week. And the tell week will be um, that. The other, um, the other thing we will be looking at is, is Patrick's model of evaluation, looking at the four levels of impact and that. And then hopefully closing the project and finishing it by June. This project has to be finished uh, from this cluster this phase of it by the end of June um, for all sorts of reasons and then we would hope the cluster will continue working but that that will depend on circumstances and I think that's the end of there just some references and I found the spelling mistake in, in the presentation it always makes me relieved <laughs> thank you